Welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News. I'm Adesua Omoran. I'm Rafael Sini. Let me properly say Happy New Year to you, Adesua. Happy New Year. This is the first time I'm seeing you this yes. brand new year. Yes, and I'm Shito Atigari. Happy New Year. I'm still not ready. Yes. <laughs> All right. While the ease of doing business in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria has improved in following the repair of roads and fixing of roads to reduce traffic congestion. Some critics of the state government are beginning to commend the efforts of the state administration by also asking for more and even adding voices to the positive ideas that can be of immense benefit to the state. And although the Babajide Sonwolu administration has promised unprecedented development in the state this year, political watchers, analysts and residents in general will be watching to see how these promises are fulfilled. Joining us now in analyzing the 2020 Lagos Development Agenda for Lagos State is Mr. Baba Tunde Olari Badamosi, a Nigerian businessman and politician, also the Action Democratic Party governorship candidate in the 2019 Lagos State gu gubernatorial election. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Now let's get straight into it. Now in Lagos State, the challenge of development is faced in the context of its global economic impact as well as its status as a mega city. The Sonolu administration seems quite confident in the development agenda for 2020, especially after signing the 1.168 trillion naira on New Year's Eve. Budget. Budget, budget yes. Yeah. I'm curious to know what your overview of that is. Are you as confident as the administration is? As much as I want the best for Lagos, thus far the administration has not quite met my expectations, especially as regards the promises made by the governor during the campaigns. Um, there were some of the promises he made that were completely unrealistic that I did not expect performance on, like, for instance, the APAPA gridlock promise of uh, 60 days. I knew that was, you know, unfeasible. He came out to say he didn't say that again. Well, but, you know, we have evidence okay. um, of him actually saying it. I was at the debate. He said it, he said it was 100 days. He would fix it in 100 days. And then at a meeting with uh, directors in Lagos State, apparently, um, I was actually ambushed with the audio at, uh, at, uh, at a radio station here in Lagos, mm -hmm. where I actually defended him and said, no, he never said 60 days, he said 100 days. And the presenter played uh, an audio tape where he was actually heard quite clearly saying that he would fix it in 60 days. And of course, I was shocked mm -hmm. that he would, you know, uh, go even that far. At 100 days, I thought it was unrealistic uh, because I felt like because of the various uh, factors involved uh, with their papa gridlock, mm. you know, the customs people, the MPA, and all these other authorities, um, it would take at least a minimum of six months to mm. even begin to make some sense out of a papa. And I felt like it would take at least 18 months for a serious government to sort out the infrastructural issues uh, within a papa. Then the procedural issues that uh, would be uh, introduced by, well, that, that, that are caused by inefficiencies in the MPA and customs will then be resolved or resolved over time by the federal government. But as far as infra infrastructural issues are concerned, I felt like it will take at least 18 months to solve uh, those problems in APAPA. And uh -huh. I'm willing, therefore, to allow until the end of 2020 to be able to do a proper assessment of the Sonwulu administration. I'm not very happy with it, a number of the things that they're doing, like the so-called palliative measures that they're applying to the roads. I disagree with them completely. Um, I've always disagreed with them. I always said that I consider uh, the so-called palliative measures to be a waste of precious public funds. Um, the argument at the time was that uh, no, but, it was a rainy but, season, but, 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 they but, but, when you say that, on but, the roads. But a lot of people are saying that the palliative measures have really helped to reduce traffic. I disagree. And, I disagree. and they will tell you that strongly that generally traffic situation has improved as a result of Because the reason for the gridlock And the problem with that the is that it's roads. only temporary. You see, every problem has an engineering solution, especially of an infrastructural nature. It has an engineering solution. And so far, the engineering is not what it should be. Um, if you're repairing roads at this level, you're not supposed to be looking to come back to that same road within the next three months or six months or even a year. Okay? Um, the, the sort of work that's been done is not going to last the rainy season. 
Oh, yeah, that that would be said. Right. But well, let, I, let, I, let, I, let I me just say okay. on the roads uh, because no matter the level of work done by the Lagos Public Works on maintaining the roads in Lagos State, we have this perennial issue of potholes in the state, and it's not just with this administration; it has always been. What is the way out? Engineering, like mm -hmm. I said earlier, mm -hmm. we have to we have to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and take a look again at our engineering processes. Is it correct in Lagos State, a waterlogged state, okay, for us to, in the process of building a road, sand fill and then put granite on that sand after compaction, compact the granite and then put asphalt on that? It's not going to work. You know, we're very close to the water table here. Yeah. So what we need to be doing is putting a more solid foundation. I refer you to Adiola Odeku mm. Street in Victoria Island. That's a paving stone road. Mm. Okay, but the work that went on into the foundation of that road by Julius Berger is exemplary. They didn't mm. use concrete. They used rocks. Mm. They used heavy boulders as foundation for Adeola Deco Road. That's why that road is going to stay there. It's not going to, there's not going to be any issues with it for a very, very long time. Okay, so you have two alternatives. You can either go concrete and steel, mm. or you use granite rocks like... Uh, Julius Berger did on Adiola I, 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 I just and on to... Abuja Airport Road. They, they, they did the same sort of work there. I just want to come in here, and, and since our, our focus is, you know, development and ideas, you know, to push Lagos forward as yes. negotiators, we, we've talked about roads. I'm sure at this point you still want to have, you have some, yes, some yes. questions. Yes, because I was thinking roads. back to Shayton's question on the budget, one point yeah, six yeah, trillion. But, but, I really but, didn't get a response. But, I didn't but, get that response but, to but, the budget. But, but I want <clears> to come in strongly here and say, and I'll tie it to the budget itself, <laughs> a sizable portion of the budget, about over 62%, goes to capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a lot of people say for the first time in Lagos, we're seeing a lot going to capital expenditure. Yes. So what should we be doing with that amount of money going to capital expenditure? What should be the project we should be looking well, at? Well, I, I would hope that the governor will try to be daring this time. You know, previous governors have not been too ambitious. I'm hoping that this governor is going to be ambitious and uh, start, you know, building new roads in areas that had no roads hitherto. So, for instance, I'm really passionate about the coastal areas of Lagos. I think that we ought to be spending more on putting infrastructure in those areas in order to allow for further economic expansion. Those areas... Uh, let's start, for instance, with the Lekki Peninsula area, the, the Atlantic coast of the Lekki Peninsula, and even the Lagoon coast of the Lekki Peninsula are completely undeveloped. There is no roads, there is no access to these areas. So if we were to put, say, for instance, on the uh, Lekki coastal area, um, a 10-lane expressway from Amadou Belo way all the way to uh, beyond La Campagne Tropicana, uh, Odeomi, Mm. which is also in Lagos State, although many people argue it's in Ogo State, but it's mm. actually in Lagos State. Um, if you were to put a 95-kilometer 10-lane expressway in that axis, what it would do for the economy of Lagos <laughs> is it would be fairly instant. A huge surfeit of construction jobs would suddenly emerge because a lot of people would buy land. They would want to be near you know, such a major infrastructural uh, uh, project. Okay. They would want to be on the road, yeah. so to speak. Um, construction, jobs, construction jobs will come up. The government will get money from C of O applications. They will get money from uh, 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 building approval applications. And they will, of course, when more and more structures are built in that area, then you can expect more funds for the government in terms of, uh, uh, what do you call it, building tax. You know, land use charge. Mm. You can expect more funds for government from that. So, but at the moment, all of that land is fallow. They're not earning the government anything. And there's only so much that government can do. Now, the little that government can do in this kind of situation is take that 60% capital expenditure and spend it on opening up new corridors. That's one. Number two, existing infrastructure that has fallen into serious disrepair, okay, whether it's federal or state can be revisited far more robustly than we're doing now in order for us to have longer term benefit of the use of these facilities. Okay? I think 
this government should consider at least these two. If you are not going to look at the power situation, sit down with Ikeja distribution and a co-distribution and work out some way in which the Lagos State government can intervene. Because really, at the end of the day, Lagos not having power is deleterious to our economy. It's a minus to the economy of Lagos. And we need to look at ways of working with the existing players in the industry to make Lagos have power any which way. Any way is a way, as far as I'm concerned, where power is concerned. Well, I've listened okay. to the executive governor speak in recent times, a couple of days ago, where he granted an interview uh, to a, a TV station. And he talked about that corridor, which you are complaining about, where it lands are followed. He talked about several roads coming up around the uh, Dangote refinery. He talked about roads going into Ijebu Day, going into Ekbe. So if you do not have business coming into Lagos directly, you can use those roads. He's talked about Fort Mainland Bridge. And talking about power, he's also talked about, you know, um, by the way, I disagree with the Fourth Milan Bridge project as it's currently set up. I okay, let's talk the about the Fourth Milan Bridge because the governor is of the opinion that that will also ease traffic congestion. Talking about the Ikorodu axis of, which I is disagree. where you are from, I disagree. Ikorodu totally. axis of the road of, of of the state to Ekpe. What is your problem with Fourth Milan Bridge? Okay, um, as it's currently designed, the Fourth Milan Bridge is a 38-kilometer bridge. This would mean that a large proportion of it will be on land. The body of water that the uh, bridge is trying to cross it's about 11 kilometers. It's only about 11 kilometers, mm -hmm. and they are planning a 38-kilometer bridge to land uh, somewhere in Ishawe in Ikorodu. This would mean that a lot of property in Ikorodu will be destroyed. Almost half of Ikorodu will be decimated by this bridge. So I disagree with it. That's number one. Number two, mm -hmm. because of the length, it's going to cost an inordinate amount of money to implement. Um, the last I heard was about $884 billion. Now, the Lekke Ekbe Expressway apparently cost LCC $382 million. All right? In today's money, that's a lot of money. Okay? And we've had to pay. We're going to continue paying until 2041 tolls to offset the debt on that road to LCC although LCC is now owned by the Lagos State Government, allegedly. I would have preferred that the state government directly build the bridge, but not make it 38 kilometers. It doesn't need to be that long. Okay? We can use a shortest, a shortest distance policy to bridge the Omo Creek, which then turns into uh, the Lagos Lagoon okay? at several points. I mean, the Thames in London is crossed at over 22 points. Well, I would like to talk about rail. Uh, but this will be, I'm sorry, we have a break now. We'll go for a break and we'll come back. But I just want to set your mind to, to rail. I mean, uh, the work has started. What, ten years in the, in the Ten years in the government. Uh, let, let's talk about, you know, development now. Let's talk about what should be, mm. how we can accelerate it. We'll go on a quick break. We'll come back and talk some more. Okay. As news right here, I was still talking to Bavati Nick Benamos, a Nigerian politician, uh, ran for governorship in the last election, uh, Action Democratic Party. So we're talking about the roots uh, concerning the rail line. I mean, we don't have to go into all the wahala. We just want to talk about the roots you talked about, you know, the yes. developmental route that would have opened up the rail line for the ideas around that. I also want to talk about water transportation. Yes. You know, you have this grand concept of the roll-on, roll of catamaran rollers that could take Ferris. more ferries, I mean, that could take more people at the same time. Let's talk about those ideas and coming here in Lagos. I mean, first of all, um, I, I felt like because of the uh, lie of the land in Lagos, because of the way Lagos is geographically, it's, it's almost a linear state. You know, it's long and narrow. Yeah. Okay? Now, I would have preferred, personally, to have a high-speed rail line running the 180-kilometer length of the Lagos coastline on the south side of Lagos. And then on the north side, again, another high-speed rail line running from Alimosho in the west all the way to Mojoda in Ekpe in the east. Now, these two rail lines, I will then, th this would be the main rail lines. And then we'll use light rail to connect the two rail lines using a multiplicity of routes so that at the end of it, uh, we could be talking in the order of about three, 400 train stations throughout Lagos. So like your DLR? 
Well, a mix of DNR, DLR. surface, uh, rail, network rail, and so on. Um, but by and large, uh, I, would, I would be wanting to connect most Lagos communities by rail. Mm. And that would require quite, uh, uh, quite an investment. I mean, it's, it's getting cheaper by the day with the advancement of various different types of trains, various different types of uh, gauges, various different types of mass transit systems like the Hyperloop. Yeah. Um, that they're implementing in Dubai at the moment, uh, between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Uh, and I think between San Francisco yeah. and Los Angeles as well. In fact, it's just launched with Elon Musk yes. on that route. Yes. I mean, that's, 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 that's a Musk idea. idea. That's a Musk you know, idea. That's yeah. been uh, uh, franchised out to a number. I think Virgin, Virgin, at the, Virgin, Virgin is, has one. Uh, I think the, there's one of them called the Virgin One Hyperloop. Yeah. Mm. And that's the one that's been implemented in, in the United Arab Emirates. Yeah. So... Um, that's too big for Lagos. I mean, it's, it's too big a project for Lagos to, for, to implement in Lagos because we have such a short distance to cover. Now, if we were to work out some kind of deal between Lagos and Abuja, mm. you know, then, yeah, that could work. We could make a, a hyperloop system work between Lagos and Abuja or between Lagos and Kano or between Lagos and Maiduguri or between Lagos and Port Harcourt or Calabar or any of these other places. But for now, because that's a totally private Thing. And the way Nigeria is, the way Nigeria is set up, um, it, it, it just wouldn't work. There will be too many permits to get, too many right too much and all of that. to navigate. Let, 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 let's talk about one that is available to us. I mean, the Hyperloop is a good idea, but in terms of carrying you know, goods and services, that's, that's another constraint until the Hyperloop constantly develops on that. But let's talk about one that is very viable that we have not tapped. You know, uh, we have cases where we have a system of water bodies that are not being used, that we can use, you know, catamaran ferries to roll out. I mean, a lot of activity goes on on the Thames. Rivers everywhere in the world is used as major point of transportation. The Seine in France, for instance, is used as a major point of transportation. So let's talk about how we can turn that around for Lagos. Well, I, I would have felt that um, the best thing to do at this stage would be for this whole administration to upgrade uh, the few jetties that we have to make them uh, uh, viable as roll-on, roll-off ferries, mm. okay, that would have been the first step um, if, I had, uh, if I had the opportunity to advise them. And I know they're listening to this, so I, I would say upgrade the existing jetties to roll-on, roll-off systems. That's number one. Number two, either the government invests directly in high-volume, high-speed, roll-on, roll-off catamaran ferries. And I say catamaran because of the draft in Lagos waters. Yeah. Our waters are really shallow. Mm. Yes. And you can't have uh, normal uh, ships with uh, single-haul ships running the uh, channels in Lagos. You need, at the very least, a, a catamaran, ideally maybe even a trimaran, to, to, you know, to traverse the waters in Lagos. So I would have bought a number of vessels, maybe about 10 to start with, um, focusing primarily on the Badagri axis because of the uh, constraints with the road there, okay, whilst you know, simultaneously working on the road at the same time. Um, I would also look at the Korodu route, also the Ekbe route, um, so that you know, the, the strain on the roads would, you know, more or less disappear. It's a faster way of getting rid of the traffic problem than rail. Mm. Because, of course, with rail, you have to wait a while. It's about five years to construct. Um, if we go by the Ethiopian example, it will take about five years to construct a uh, 720-kilometer uh, uh, rail line um, or a 37-kilometer rail line within Addis Ababa itself. Uh, it took them about five years to do that. So... In the time that you're waiting for the rail to be ready, you need to have alternatives. You need to have viable alternatives. And the, the ferries, um, luckily for us, because we're in an area with plenty of water, yeah. it would have been so ideal. But, you know, it's so sad when you're on the bridges and you look out across the water. Mm. It's empty. And it's just empty, you know. Whereas when you're on any of the bridges in London, Wherever, I don't care which bridge you're on, whether it's Tower Bridge or London Bridge or Blackfriars Bridge or, which, or Lambeth Bridge, or, there's always a ferry passing. It's either a tourist <laughs> boat, you know, one of those, uh, one of those boats that take you on, on, on a mm -hmm. tour, mm -hmm. or you have the actual passenger ferries 
I think they're called water taxis. Yeah. Okay. You have all these systems in and, place. And it's quite viable because even if you look, even in New York, mm. Staten Island, you need to take yes. a ferry. Yes. So that brings me to the, the next, because There's uh, Governor Sun will be coming into mm -hmm. uh, power. I did promise a uh, six-pillar agenda. We've talked so much about transportation. Let's look at something he also promised. Uh, although it's barely six months since he came to power, you've said you would like to give time yes, before you I'd, can. Yes, I'd like to give it months before we can. Which is very commendable. But yeah. let's look at um, entertainment and tourism. And yes. I bring this up because you, you've just mentioned tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you say we are fed in that aspect? And what can we do more uh, in entertainment and tourism? We're, right now, we're... You there are see, lots of festivals I mean, going some on. Some would argue It's that. not about the festivals. Mm -hmm. okay. It's about our capacity to receive guests coming in from abroad, our capacity to service them, our capacity to give them a good time, value for their money, the sort of value that we get when we go to Dubai or when we go to London or when we go to New York. Is that a fair comparison at this point? Why not? I mean, Dubai started this whole revolution in the 70s when Lagos already had skyscrapers and Dubai had none. You know, Nigeria had Nigeria Airways 42 planes. Dubai had no airline. There was no Emirates. All right? So that we've not gone beyond where we were in the 70s is our problem. I mean, so when you say it's not a fair comparison, I'm sorry, I disagree with you completely. I'm I think that uh, the fact that we've not developed beyond, say, in Dubai, <laughs> you know, uh, is a testament to our indolence, unfortunately, as a people. I mean, some would argue that point and say that we actually have done really well. Especially if, I know it's fair, I to compare, totally. it's fair to compare Lagos with Dubai, but you should, you should also look at Lagos as the one state that has done something. According to the oh, stats, please. according to the stats, oh, please. You we cannot, have, we've you, actually had the highest number of look, people come as in far this as, year. As far as an international uh, destination, mm -hmm. okay, you cannot compare Lagos to any other state in Nigeria. Why do you say so? It doesn't bear comparison. Because Lagos has been in existence as a trading post for centuries. You know, this didn't start with the colonials. It started before them. All right? So that we're not able to move beyond where we were in the 50s, again, I insist, is a testament to our indolence as a people. And we need to wake up from that. We need to move on. We should be comparing ourselves. For instance, let me give you an example. Kigali. Rwanda mm -hmm. came out of a war situation. They came out of a civil war situation. Go and look at them now. Okay? Barely 20 years ago, they came out of a, of a civil war situation. Look at them now. Look at Accra in Ghana. All right? Look at Banjul in Gambia. And if we look at to, Cape if Town in South tell, Africa. For want These of are time, all territories that, are, that, that you could say, okay, let's compare Lagos to okay. all these places. Or perhaps... Let's stretch it a little further and compare Lagos to Singapore, a territory that's far smaller than if Lagos. If you would just allow me, Mr. Bedamasi, so that we can the cover the population uh, of a Lagos, lot of no oil, if you could, and look at them now. If you could advise Governor Babajide Sonwolu, who has promised greater development for Lagos this year, on the aspect of tourism and entertainment, what would you be telling him? Be now? bold, be ambitious, and be imaginative, just like all our kids. The Davidos, the Whiskeys, the Burner Boys, the Tiwa Savages that are going around the world and conquering the entertainment industry on a global level. Okay? Now, we have dropped the ball as far as government is concerned. We are not, we are letting down the side. We are short one, so to speak. Okay? I don't know if you ever played football <laughs> as a, as a five kid. Five aside. I know. Yeah, five aside. <laughs> we, 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 the bad players, we used to call them short one because short they let the side down. Mm. And government is the short one right now as far as the entertainment and tourism industries are concerned. Because, for instance, you're, you're going to a place you want to go and spend money. You should be able to use the public transport system without complication, without fear. But people are, a lot of people, no, so I, I'll come in there real quickly. I had a lot of friends that came in from the UK this yes. Christmas. That they, yes. they were so comfortable in the BRT system. They used the BRT system. In fact, one was telling me the other day that, oh, it was declared free. Yeah, uh, on the 1st of January, thing, that he yes. went to many routes yesterday. And he used the BRT system a lot. Of in course. Fact, that, it's, it's one commendable thing that yeah. the BRT system exists. But on a normal working day, you remember that's a holiday. Mm. Mm. On a normal working day, what's Lagos like? Is the BRT system as fluid, as, as easy to use on well, a normal what, working day? That's we talk about things like 
Very. That's what we talk about things. Exactly. Like real and this is why I said I mean, the governor needs to be bold. But he needs to be at, ambitious. At, at, he at needs same, to be imaginative. At, at the same time, if we talk okay. about that, and we're, for the sake of making comparisons, yes. I've been in the ten-hour traffic in New York. Yes, that's fine. Yeah. So, but, but, but then <laughs> that's like but, but then your, ten, your ten-hour traffic in New York. You chose to be there. You could have got off and got on the subway. That was that alternative. It's a work in progress, and that's why we're talking development. Do you understand? <laughs> yes. In Lagos, when you are stuck in traffic, there's no alternative. You can't simply jump out of your cab and run into the nearest subway station so that you can get to your destination faster. If you, you choose to, to yes, if you if you if you choose to remain in your car in New York, that's your personal choice. Well, home to 22 million people and counting by the hour, Lagos is big, and it needs to be ambitious as well. Exactly. In terms of priority, very quickly, what should we be focusing on in 20, in 2020? Well, roads, fix the roads. Build more new roads, build more new bridges, connect more communities. Okay, that's number one. Number two, ferries, quickly. Quickly. Get onto the ferry issue as quickly as well. And, you know, Uber, boat, that's not going to solve the okay. problem. That's a, that's a drop in the ocean. Unfortunately, and, and we I mean have that, to go. You know, Thank you so much.